Yes, how's that? Fantastic. Can't see your picture at the moment, though. Oh, oh, start, hold it, hold it, start sharing. There we go. Fantastic, and now I can see you. Brilliant. So, hello, everybody. Um, my name's Mark Mackay from KiwiSpace. Um, up above me in the, uh, the video window, you should see Scott Madry, who's our special guest for today. Uh, and I'd like, you to, I'd like to welcome you all along to this uh, special video conference, which is being run as part of World Space Week. World Space Week is about to come to a close, but I hope you've enjoyed all of the events this past week, and uh, thank you very much for joining us for this final session. I would like to extend my thank you to Adobe, uh, who provided the software and made this webinar possible, uh, and also the uh, earlier sessions we had with the other uh, schools and uh, Cosmolot Dmitry Kondrachev. But now it gives me a great pleasure to introduce Scott Madry. Uh, Scott's the Program Director for the Southern Hemisphere Summer Space Program, which is part of the International Space University. I met Scott about a year ago uh, and was lucky enough to attend the first ISU course in Adelaide Led, led by Scott this year, uh, and I'm so grateful for him joining us today to let us know a little bit more about the course. Um, so thank you very much, Scott. Um, Scott will be doing a short presentation, uh, then we'll have um, a Q&A session. Um, we'll try to enable the microphones where we can, but at any point in time, down the bottom, you should see a, a, a below the presentation, you should see a pod saying Q&A. If you just type a question in there, that will basically be added to a queue for um, for which Scott um, will be able to see the questions um, that come through. And so when we get to Q&A time, um, we'll just go through each of those questions. Um, we'll, for the sites we know the audio set up for, we'll um, enable the audio. But for the other sites, we'll just read out your name and ask the question on your behalf. Um, feel free to fire through as many questions as you'd like. Um, and obviously, as you go through the slideshows, um, you may have questions that arise. Feel, feel free to add them um, at that particular point in time. Um, and that will help us kind of feedback and um, maybe answer those questions as we go through the presentation as well. So, yes, yeah, so without uh, much more ado, I'll um, pass over to Scott. Um, thank you very much. Okay, well, good evening, everyone. I hope, uh, can you hear me all right? They won't be able to hear your, um, they won't be able to reply. Yes, you're coming through fine. Uh, you'll oh, see them okay. answering Just the chat sure window I'm at the bottom right. Through. Very good. Oh, I see. Excellent. Okay, so hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Scott. I'm uh, very happy to join you uh, this evening, or uh, for me, this morning. Actually, it's uh, 7 in the morning for me. I'm in uh, South Africa at the moment. In fact, let me see if this will show. Yeah. I'm at the University of the Witwatersrand, in Johannesburg. I just came back from the IEC conference in Cape Town. Had a great conference. It was really, really good. Uh, lots of uh, excellent presentations and papers and uh, uh, lots of uh, good friends uh, to see there. So I had an excellent um, time in the Cape and now I'm up in Johannesburg. I taught here last year at uh, WITS, as they call it. I had a Fulbright last year and uh, had the opportunity to come and teach here for a couple of months. And so I'm taking the opportunity to uh, visit again. In fact, I'm teaching a, a two-day short course on uh, hands-on remote sensing and uh, GIS uh, today and tomorrow uh, before I head back uh, home to North America. So uh, welcome to all of you. Thank you so much for joining. Uh, I appreciate your time very much. And what I'm going to present is the same paper I gave at IAC, uh, which is a brief description of our new International Space University program, uh, which is our Southern Hemisphere Summer Space Program. So yeah, you do have to watch those guys. You're right. They, they, they uh, steal your lunch before you know it. So uh, hopefully you can see the, uh, the next slide. And uh, very briefly, I want to introduce to you what ISU is, uh, International Space University. It's a, uh, the only educational institution in the world which is fully dedicated to uh, all aspects of space. If it's space, we do it. If it doesn't have uh, anything to do with space, we're probably not too interested in it. 
this is a picture of our first class of the Southern Hemisphere program uh, that we ran last uh, January and uh, February in uh, beautiful uh, Adelaide, Australia. And ISU is basically uh, all about space. And I assume uh, the reason you guys are on this evening is the, because that's something that is of interest to you. So I assume we call it the three I's of uh, international, interdisciplinary, and intercultural. And so we are uh, an inherently international entity. I'm obviously from the United States. I am on the ISU faculty with uh, people from literally all over the world. Uh, we're a very international uh, faculty as well as uh, student bodies. We are uh, unique in that we are uh, totally interdisciplinary. So uh, we teach uh, lawyers about engineering and we teach engineers about policy and we teach policy people about space medicine and uh, in a very intercultural environment. And so the way we like to do things is uh, a very broad uh, perspective, a broad view uh, across nations, across cultures, and across academic disciplines as well. A little bit of background and history about ISU. Uh, it was founded in, uh, the idea was early. Uh, I was actually involved in the founding of uh, ISU. I was at our founding conference. Our very first program was held in Cambridge, Mass. at uh, MIT in 1988. And uh, this coming July, uh, ISU will hold our 25th SSP, our Space Studies program. Uh, which is our nine-week uh, Northern Hemisphere summer program run in July and August. So uh, we're getting to be 25 years old. Uh, I've been at most of those. Uh, in 1995, we uh, began our first master's program, which is a year-long uh, program, uh, Master of Space Studies. We opened our brand new campus in Strasbourg, France, which is uh, where uh, home is uh, for most of our programs in uh, 2002. And you can see a picture there of our uh, lovely campus. Uh, and uh, I would like to invite all of you, anytime you're in Europe, to please feel free to come by and, uh, and visit our campus. We're constantly expanding and adding uh, to our academic programs. Uh, we started our uh, Master of Space Management in 04. We started an executive NBA program in 09. And then just last January, as Mark said, we began our newest program uh, that I have the, the great pleasure of being the director of, which is our Southern Hemisphere Summer Space Program. So we have a wide variety of different uh, programs and options uh, all having to do with different aspects of space. But one thing that we've realized over the years is if you look at uh, the demographics of who is participating in our programs, um, there's a significant bias towards the Northern Hemisphere. And this is our masters, our, uh, all the people who have participated in our masters program and you can see that uh, three quarters are from Europe and North America. And uh, Africa, Asia Pacific, South America, the Middle East, all of these are quite underrepresented, certainly when you look at uh, population globally. And uh, one of the reasons for this is uh, our, if you will, flagship program is our SSP, our nine-week July and August program, and its timing is a problem for you guys uh, and for the nations in the Southern Hemisphere in general. And you can see here all of the uh, nine-week courses that we've run since 1988. Only two of them have been in the Southern Hemisphere. Uh, we were in Valparaiso, Chile in 2000 and uh, beautiful Adelaide, Australia in 04. And obviously part of the problem is that the the, the holiday season and academic schedule timing 
uh, is not good for the southern hemisphere. And uh, July and August is our summer uh, break, uh, but obviously that does not um, hold true for the people in the south. And if you look at, again, who has participated in ISU programs in general, we have over 3,000 alumni from over 100 countries. Uh, but again, you can see that we have uh, certainly less participation in South America and Africa. Uh, Mark uh, points out to me, and this, this graphic is before Mark participated in our program in last January. So uh, New Zealand is now red, and we do now have uh, uh, alumni from New Zealand. So, uh, but this is the reason why we, uh, ISU wants to be the space education opportunity for all the people in the world. And the world is changing rapidly, as you guys all know, if you're a bunch of space geeks like me, you know that the space world has changed tremendously since we started out in 1988, since our masters started out. Um, in, in the early days, it was the US, Soviet Union, uh, Europe, uh, but now the world has changed, and I see I'm dropping out some, must be not enough coffee. Uh, let me know if something I say does not uh, come through. And uh, okay, so uh, what Mark did, he's, you've seen enough of my beautiful face, uh, so hopefully by killing the webcam, uh, we'll free up a little bandwidth and make it easier uh, to, uh, for you to hear me. So essentially, the message is that the space world has changed tremendously in the past years. Uh, and now we have uh, nations like Brazil, like South Africa, like Nigeria, Chile, Malaysia, all now have space uh, agencies. Uh, the technologies uh, have changed significantly. We have more and more people in the southern hemisphere involved in space. And so ISU decided that we need to look at the world a little bit differently. Some of you may be familiar with, uh, with this uh, map projection here, but ISU decided that we need to reach out to the nations of the Southern Hemisphere and, and make a program which is both available at a time which works for you guys in your academic and holiday schedules, but also that is geared towards the needs of the developing world nations and the southern hemisphere nations. And so we started thinking about how could we meet this new and growing need. And so what I've done, and I hope the geodesists in the world don't mind, uh, we have arbitrarily moved the equator up to the Tropic of Cancer. And for our new program, the uh, if you will, the, the southern and developing world states, we've chosen the uh, Tropic of Cancer to be uh, sort of our area of focus. And another way to look at it is the non-space station nations. Uh, we welcome students and participants from all countries. Uh, we very much want to have participation from North America uh, and Europe. Uh, Russia, but really our new program is geared towards all those countries above the purple line here. Uh, and uh, that includes all of Central America and South America, obviously New Zealand, Australia, all of the South Pacific, all of Africa, the Middle East, China, India. This uh, new program that we have is really geared and dedicated towards your interests. So uh, the SHSSP, as we call it, is a five-week intensive uh, live-in program. It is also new uh, in terms of ISU because uh, we, uh, for the first time, are allowing senior undergraduate students to participate. All the other ISU programs are limited uh, to uh, people who, ha who have a bachelor's degree, uh, but we uh, want to extend our reach. And so uh, our program is uh, also available to people who have completed their second year of undergraduate studies. 
Our first program ran in Adelaide uh, from uh, January uh, to February last year. Had an excellent program. Uh, had 43 students from 10 countries. Uh, and uh, our first three programs will be held at the University of South Australia called UniSA at their Mawson Lakes campus in Adelaide, Australia. And after our first three programs there, so we've done one, we'll be there again in January and again the year after. And then after that, we're going to start bouncing around the Southern Hemisphere in the same way that our SSP program bounces around the world as well. And the idea is that we want to go to South Africa, uh, we want to go to South America, and uh, I absolutely intend in the future that we will uh, come around and have a program there in beautiful New Zealand as well. So uh, the reason we were actually able to start our new program uh, last January was because we applied together with the Uni uh, SA, uh, the Australian space or the Australian government uh, started a, uh, a grant uh, offering. Uh, Australia really has not been very involved in space. Uh, the world has changed and so they decided they needed to re-engage uh, in the space domain, put together an Australian space research program uh, of funds for research, development, and education. And so uh, ISU and UniSA partnered together put in a proposal and we were fortunate enough to win uh, in the first round uh, 450,000 Australian dollars over three years to begin uh, our new program. And this is why our first three programs will be held in Australia before we start bouncing around the southern world. In terms of our curriculum, it's a very jam-packed five weeks. Uh, did a lot of work in terms of figuring out how to uh, maintain the same quality of excellence and broad coverage, but go from nine weeks to five. And so it's a very intense program. You see the picture on the upper right, that's sort of the pace that we maintain. Uh, it's, it's quite a run. And uh, after I talk, uh, Mark will speak with you briefly about his experience of being one of our first student uh, guinea pigs. And it's quite a, uh, an intensely paced program. We have about 40 hours of what we call the core lecture curriculum, where we uh, have uh, one hour lectures uh, covering all aspects of space from engineering, policy, law, business management, science, astrophysics, uh, human space flight, propulsion, etc. We also have about 60 hours of hands-on workshops because some uh, aspects of education in space are, are really better done in a hands-on environment. So we do lots of hands-on work uh, in terms of uh, remote sensing, GIS, GPS, etc. Then we have our white paper, uh, which is a, a typical aspect of ISU. All of our ISU programs have what we call a joint thesis. Students don't write individual papers students must come together as a team and write a, uh, a combined thesis. And uh, in our new program, we call this a, uh, our white paper. Then we also have a significant amount of independent uh, study and work and a wide variety of evening activities, cultural activities, local visits, uh, special lectures, uh, etc. So this is our general breakdown of uh, some of the program. Here you see Dr. Peter Martinez from South Africa, who was our host at the IEC down at Cape Town last week. You can see we have a, a broad variety of uh, disciplines uh, represented. And again, we have a large number of three, uh, uh, almost 20 three-hour hands-on workshops. We do space medicine. People do suturing. Uh, we do policy and law. Uh, workshops. We do lots of hands-on remote sensing and uh, GIS type stuff. 
which is my uh, area of expertise. But one of the main things about ISU, and, uh, and especially in our new program as well, is this concept of the jointly authored thesis. And this is part of the three-I approach of ISU. People have to learn how to work together. We have Chinese and Americans and Australians and New Zealanders and Africans have to come together, have to bridge their disciplinary and personal and cultural divides and, and produce a written document. Our first program, we actually let the students tell us, instead of the other way around, what should this whole program be about? And so our first joint thesis white paper was uh, called Defining the Role of Space for the Southern Hemisphere Nations, a plan for the future. And uh, it's available online. You're all uh, welcome. Just Google it. And you can find it. And uh, I'm, uh, was, we were all very pleased with the quality of the work which was produced. Uh, we also have a variety of evening public events where we interface with our host city uh, public, uh, a variety of uh, uh, open lectures. And uh, another large part of our programs is uh, that we always have an international astronaut panel. Here you see on the right. Uh, so Yen Yi, uh, the first Korean astronaut uh, down at the bottom, and also uh, Jean-Jacques Favier uh, from France uh, did our uh, international astronaut panel. And they're both there for a week, interacting with the students, talking, uh, uh, working with our people very closely. So we have a, a very world-class faculty. We're very proud of the ISU faculty. Uh, on the left, you can see uh, a variety of the uh, standard ISU faculty. Again, people from uh, NASA, astronauts, people from ESA, uh, throughout the world. And on the right, we've also brought in a large number of Australian uh, faculty. And as we bounce around the world and go to different places, uh, we always uh, try to make a maximum use of uh, the local uh, lecturer uh, capabilities as well. So we had 43 students from uh, 10 countries, and we're very proud to finally have uh, New Zealand as part of our uh, ISU uh, base. Uh, they ranged from uh, third-year undergraduates to 50-year-old, very experienced professionals, uh, lots of Aussies, lots of engineers. Uh, but it was a great group. We had a wonderful time uh, working together. And I'll let Mark uh, speak after I do about uh, what it was like uh, from the student perspective. A good thing about the program is uh, because we are doing this in concert as a partnership with the University of South Australia, is that uh, this is a fully accredited academic program. Students who uh, successfully complete the program, and we do have quizzes and examinations, uh, students who successfully complete the program uh, are able to receive nine units of academic credit from UniSA, which is the equivalent of a quarter semester. And they are then also eligible to apply for and participate in a new UniSA graduate certificate in space studies. And this is done in the six weeks immediately after our program. It's all done uh, by distance education. So you are paired with a faculty mentor uh, from ISU or UniSA. Quite often, it's on a topic uh, that builds out of our white paper uh, research topic. And uh, students who successfully complete uh, their paper uh, and presentation for the graduate certificate receive another uh, nine units of credit from UniSA. So by completing both uh, pieces of this, people can get a half a full uh, semester's undergraduate credit. And then if you decide you would be interested in participating in one of the ISU year-long master's programs, uh, you can apply to ISU. And uh, if the faculty agree, you can then skip the first module of the master's uh, based on the knowledge that you gained in these two programs. So our upcoming session uh, starts January 9. 
We run through February 11. Uh, we will offer a uh, technical English language course the week before. I don't think any of you guys will have to participate in that, but uh, many of our uh, non-native English speakers like to participate in that. Uh, these numbers are over, uh, way old by now. We have uh, about 26 uh, completed applications. Over 70 people are in the process of applying. And the closing date is November 30. And uh, we would absolutely love to have some of you guys uh, participating uh, here this evening uh, seriously consider joining us in Adelaide next January. Our white paper joint thesis topic this year will be space-based, what we call telereach systems for the Southern Hemisphere, a common resource for a shared future. And what we're going to look at is the current state of the art and future directions of telemedicine, teleeducation, uh, remote astronomical uh, observ observatory teleoperations, and how these technologies can serve, again, primarily the needs of the Southern Hemisphere and developing world nations. So uh, our application uh, period is open through November 30, but I would strongly urge anyone who might be interested in uh, coming and participating to please apply early because we do have uh, some funds for matching scholarships uh, to support students, but uh, they are being given out in uh, terms uh, partly of the order that applications are completed. Uh, so we would love to have people come uh, and join us. The cost to uh, participate in the program is 10900 Australian dollars. Uh, it includes all food, uh, housing. It's an excellent food, excellent housing, uh, private uh, apartments, full kitchens, cable TV, wireless internet, very, very high quality of uh, 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 housing and food resources. And uh, so that's pretty much what I wanted to say. Uh, that's my introduction to our program. Uh, it's, it's a very exciting, dynamic period. Uh, we work very, very hard. We also play very hard. We have a very good time. Uh, one of our unofficial mottos is uh, that you can sleep on the plane home. And uh, a lot of people slept very well on the plane home last year, including myself. So that's my introduction to our new Southern Hemisphere program. I'm very honored to be uh, involved in it, and uh, I appreciate, Mark, very much your putting this thing together so that I can uh, talk to you guys uh, down there in New Zealand about our program. That's what I had to say, and so I would love to answer any questions that you may have. Cool. Well, thank you very much, Scott. So uh, yeah, if you guys, anyone has any questions, uh, I've just enabled audio for everyone. So um, if you do have a question, you should be able to hit the microphone button at the top of your screen. Um, and then, um, actually it would help if you raised your hand. You should see the button on the right hand side, raise hand. Um, you should just see my, myself raise my hand. That just lets us know, um, and then I will direct to you. Uh, you can also chat, uh, ask a question in either the chat window or the Q&A pod down the bottom. So does anyone have any questions now? Other, uh, just in re response to some of the details Scott has raised. Otherwise, I can go through a bit of a short presentation just on kind of my perspective of the course as well. Got a question from Nancy coming by the looks of it. A question from Nancy. How many students uh, how many are expected students to be are we in the next intake? We're hoping for about 50 to 55. We had 43 last time. Uh, 
And our goal eventually is up? to run at about 60 uh, to 65 students. Uh, but our goal for next year is uh, about 50. We're about halfway there uh, right now. And so uh, we're hoping to um, Ah, yes. Can you can you hear me? Okay, no problem. So uh, the we're hoping to have about fifty students. Uh, we had forty three the first time. Our eventual goal is to have about sixty to sixty five, but our goal for January is uh, about fifty. We're about halfway there, so we have about, tw I think we have 23 students currently accepted. So we have about uh, halfway to go. So we're looking for about uh, 50, and I think I count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven uh, New Zealander students uh, on this presentation. So uh, you're all invited to come and play. Let's see, I also see a question from Karen. Stuart, hi there. Thank you very much for joining us. What's the big difference between uh, the SSP and the Southern Show? And obviously the big difference, uh, first of all, is the SSP is nine weeks and the uh, Southern Show is five. And we cut it down to five for several reasons. One is we wanted it to fit in the Southern Hemisphere academic break, uh, Christmas break, if you will, uh, before the semesters start up. And so the biggest difference, uh, let's see, we have four weeks of core lectures in the Northern program. We've reduced that to three in the Southern program. So we've combined some numbers of lectures. We actually, though, have more hands-on workshops in the Southern Show uh, than we have in the Northern program. The other uh, big difference is in the Northern program, we have about 120, 125 students. Uh, and so we do a, a two-week period in the Northern program of departmental work. And uh, because of the shortened time frame in the South, uh, we don't do the department breakouts. So essentially, uh, in the Southern program, uh, we consider everybody to be part of the same one department. But yes, we do cover all the same subjects, but in a slightly uh, different mix. In the Northern program, uh, for example, we do uh, a great deal of work in space medicine and human physiology, human space flight. Our focus, we still cover all aspects of, of those in the southern hemisphere, but it, the relative uh, representation is somewhat less. In the southern show, we focus more on space policy, uh, international relations and applications because in many of our developing world uh, and southern world nations it's really the practical stuff that that is driving people people are interested in telecom remote sensing navigation and timing gps uh, sort of the practical benefits of our access to space uh, and a little bit less. Also, I should say, uh, we have a lot of focus in our Southern program on astronomy because of the vital important role that the great observatories of the Southern Hemisphere uh, uh, provide. So we actually have more lectures on astronomy. Uh, for example, we have dedicated lectures on the new uh, square uh, kilometer array uh, and stuff like that. So that's pretty much the difference. But in the end, we cover all aspects of space. And uh, when people uh, complete our Southern Hemisphere program, they are complete full ISU alumni, uh, just like everybody else. How's that, Karen? Does that answer your question? I hope. Great. Super. Okay, somebody else, hit me.
Super. Okay, so let's see. What is the criteria? Stardom. What's the criteria for scholarships? Ooh, excellent question. Uh, see, in the right hand side, there's a Q and A panel. Is uh, we have if you go to click on through our funding from the. Go ahead, Mark. Sorry, Scott. I don't know if you can hear me. Yep, there's a Q&A panel on the right-hand side. If you change that yes, to show my questions, you should see three questions assigned oh, to them. Oh, I got it. Oh, excellent. Okay, thank you very much. I got them. Stardom. Nice name. Uh, what are the criteria for scholarships? Uh, in general, we have uh, half bursaries available. So we have, through our funding from uh, the Australian government, as well as some additional scholarship funding from the two institutions, we have uh, a variety of half scholarships. Uh, and so we're trying to spread the scholarships around as broadly as we can. Uh, so we have uh, a, 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 what we're primarily offering are half scholarships. Uh, which takes the cost down to about 5000 I know that's still a lot of money. We also do have available through the Heinlein Trust. I don't know how many of you know of Robert Heinlein, the famous uh, science fiction writer. His family trust uh, offers uh, no interest loans which are available to uh, participants in our program. And there are several other private uh, scholarship activities as well. So the short answer is that we have a pretty good number of half scholarships that are available. But because of the visa and access issues in Australia, we're handing them out pretty quick. So it's very important that people, my, my main suggestion would be to please just apply and then uh, we can work uh, through the uh, scholarship issues. So how's that stardom? Does that answer your question? Let's see. Finian Cheshire. Hi Finian. How are you? Talk a bit about some of the policy topics. Ah, great question. Great question. Yeah, we have a a large number of uh, international policy uh, regulatory experts, uh, again, from around the world. We have, uh, for example, uh, this January, we'll have the former director of the ESA Galileo program, Rene Osterlink, uh, talking about uh, GNSS uh, policy. Uh, one of the things that we do at ISU that I I really like how we do it is, uh, for example, I give a lecture on satellite remote sensing. So I talk about what remote sensing is, how it works, how, to, how we operate uh, sensors in space and the applications. And then the lecture immediately following me will be a lecture on remote sensing policy issues. And so uh, we do back-to-back -back lectures in space and security, in orbital debris, in remote sensing, and in uh, satellite navigation and GNSS, where we talk about the technology. And then we actually talk about the regulatory policy environment. What's the reality? A lot of what ISU tries to do is give you a peek behind the curtain of what really goes on in terms of the ITU, spectrum regulation, uh, the conflicting battles that go on behind the scenes, behind spectrum use and GNSS and remote sensing and uh, all of these things. We want our graduates to be well-rounded and be able to understand the reality behind all of these issues. And so those are some of the, uh, so we deal with 
almost every aspect of space policy. <coughs> so how's that, Finney? And I does uh, let me know if let me know if that answers your question and send me a chat or another question and I'll try and address it more. So let's see, Cosmo Scott. Oh, reading my Vita. Oh my gosh. Well, that's a scary thing. Uh, yes, I. <coughs> one of the remote sensing applications uh, areas that I work in is in the application of space technologies to archaeology. And in fact, I'm here at uh, the University of the Witwatersrand uh, teaching uh, in the geography and archaeology curriculum. And so uh, cultural heritage management, the location and preservation of our global cultural heritage is a hugely important aspect of space. Uh, UN, UNESCO, every national government is involved in uh, the location and management and preservation of cultural heritage uh, sites for many reasons, for tourism, for science, and for our conservation of our common human cultural heritage. And so the application of these technologies uh, to this field is an area that I have worked in for many years. Uh, and I've done a lot of work in uh, utilizing satellite remote sensing and GPS, uh, geographic information systems uh, in the uh, location and modeling and ultimately the preservation and conservation of uh, cultural heritage or archaeology activities. It's a lot of fun and fascinating. I've got to work all over the world uh, with colleagues uh, doing this kind of work and, and that's actually what I'm doing here uh, at WITS, uh, working with the uh, archaeology people uh, doing uh, human origins, uh, looking for ancient uh, hominid fossil sites uh, on the African landscape. Uh, I've also done some really interesting things in Africa. I've, I've worked with mountain gorilla conservation in uh, Rwanda. I've worked in uh, national park management uh, in uh, the Kenya uh, Wildlife Service. So there's all kinds of really interesting things you can do uh, in space and working in uh, archaeology and cultural resource management and preservation is one of the areas that I've worked at uh, in for many years. And I look forward to coming to New Zealand and learning more about the kinds of things that you guys do down there. So let's see, start on, uh, how many people do we put together uh, as a team in the white paper? Excellent question. So essentially all the students, and let's say it'll be 50 this time, all of them uh, are one team and are responsible in the end for producing the white paper product. And every student receives uh, a grade, which is half the total product and then half their individual personal effort. And so all 50 students work together to produce the deliverables. And we have several deliverables that the students have to produce. The first is the white paper itself, which we limit to no more than 20 pages. 20 pages. And so it's not how much you write, it's, it's how well and it's the concept of a white paper is a very specific, uh, direct, policy, uh, practical related document. So it's not this huge hundreds pages dissertation. Our documents that our students produce are sent to and read by uh, people throughout the international space community. And so the first deliverable in the white paper is a 20 page uh, uh, paper which uh, addresses the issues, makes recommendations. Uh, the second deliverable is a uh, five-page executive summary 
and these are sent to the heads of every international and national space agency, uh, all the large uh, space corporations, major universities. Uh, we also have students produce a, an A0 size poster and everybody takes the, the PDF home so you can give uh, a poster presentation at a uh, national or regional space conference yourself. And then we also have them produce a three-fold uh, flyer on the subject. And the, uh, so we actually produce uh, those four deliverables as well as the students have to give an hour-long presentation at the end of the program. Uh, so we have one team, they, uh, you, the students are responsible for organizing yourselves. Uh, we have uh, several faculty uh, who work with the students, but uh, we don't really tell you what to do. We are there as resources to assist you, but in the end, the students organize uh, research and produce the deliverables and all receive a common grade as well as a grade individually on your individual performance. Okay. Uh-oh. Cosmos at what's scary? Oh, what's like a book? I don't know. Oh, program content. Ah, I see. Ah, it's not scary at all. It's a lot of fun. Hey, hey Scott. Okay, any other questions from anybody? Scott. If not, maybe we can have Mark uh, give you the true lowdown of uh, what it was like to, to be there and participate in the program. What do you say, Mark? I, yeah, yeah, sure, Scott. I think we had a bit of a dropout towards the, just towards the end there, like the last minute. I'm hoping people can hear again now. Can everyone still hear us now? Okay, that's a good sign. Okay, cool. Hello, testing. All right, yeah, that's not a problem. Um, I there? think Scott. Have I put you all to sleep? Can you not hear us? <laughs> Okay, so I think we might have a little bit of difficulty just with Scott at the moment. Mark, uh, maybe Mark. his connection's a little bit laggy. Calling Mark. Uh, hi, Scott. We can hear you. Okay, well, um, yep, Scott suggested that I jump over to my presentation, so why don't we do that? And then if there's any more questions, we'll come back to, um, uh, to, to, to Scott's, come back to Scott and you can pose some more questions. So feel free to add some more. Earth to New Zealand, Earth to New Zealand. This is Johannesburg calling. Can anybody hear me? Are you guys there? I think I may have lost you. Scott, we can hear you. All right, I will um, disable Scott's audio for the moment and we'll see if we can sort him out and get him back. Um, Sorry about this, I'm glad the bulk of the presentation came through. Um. Okay, so um, I'll do a short presentation on my experiences at, um, uh, at ISU this year. Could everyone see my presentation up on screen? Fantastic. Cool. Uh, let me just turn Scott off. I'm hearing a lot of background noise in the background. Cool. Alrighty, so um, yeah, so this is a, uh, I did the course earlier this year uh, and totally loved it um, and I uh, really think all of you should apply today obviously. Um, uh, I'll get started just on the slides. So um, 
I mean, basically, it's an awesome setting at Mawson Lakes. Uh, it's a small university town, and uh, everything's within walking distance. And it's about a 20-minute train ride to Adelaide, um, so it's uh, easy access to the nightlife, shopping, etc. One thing that is important to remember is that this is a live-in course. So when you're looking at the $11,000 course cost, remember that you're supplied with breakfast, lunch, and dinner, um, and and all your accommodation for the five weeks. Um, uh, and all the apartments really do look this good. It's, uh, it's it's got kind of said in the introduction. It's a uh, it's a very good setup there. Um, we're definitely being treated, I guess, to some really quite nice accommodation. Um, and uh, yeah, no, it's, it's absolutely fantastic. You um you end up sharing uh, the apartment uh, with about two to three people that are also doing the course, uh, and of course your other classmates are uh, also in nearby rooms. So yeah. After hours, you hang out, have a lot of fun. Uh, it's a great community all over. It's uh, quite fantastic. Um, and the meals were too great. Uh, yeah, the local hotel and conference centre catered for most of them. Uh, the meals were huge and tasty, uh, and you definitely don't go home hungry. Obviously, ISU, um, as with uh, any experience, it's, it's about the people you meet uh, when you're doing it, um, and they're fantastic. Um, uh, they will honestly remain my friends for life. Uh, they came from many countries, Australia, India, China, uh, Brazil, uh, South Africa, etc. Um, and from so many backgrounds. So, you know, there were people working literally kind of involved with writing Australia's space policy, um, people from the Australian military and, uh, and abroad, um, uh, students still studying engineering or related kind of disciplines, um, and, in, and actually a number of people uh, that were actually building rockets as part of their day job. Um, so it was really kind of cool just to kind of find out, uh, and, and yeah, you get to talk to all these people, kind of see their backgrounds, find out a lot more about the careers there, etc., which is uh, quite fascinating. And then, of course, there's the faculty as well. Um, they're, they're awesome. Um, you've just heard Scott talk. Um, he, he delivers a number of the presentations uh, during the actual session. Um, and uh, he's engaging. It's fantastic. I love you, Scott. You're brilliant. Um, yeah, this photo here is just of the uh, the core team, uh, but there's about kind of um, 40 to 50 staff um, all said. Um, yeah, Scott mentioned a, a number of the faculty that are kind of brought in from locally around Australia and flown in from abroad. Um, and uh, yeah, they're all space professionals who you get to meet, spend time with, you know, ask questions of, um, you know, suck their brains on uh, you know, finding out how to do what you've always kind of wanted to do within your space career. Um, you know, they're all my friends now, um, and that connection's just kind of, um, uh, it's, yeah, you can't kind of, you really want that. It's, it's just awesome. And there's not too many places where you can actually kind of hang with astronauts for an extended period. Uh, so on my, well, on the left of the photo when you're looking at it is uh, Soyeon Yi, the first Korean astronaut, and on the right is Jean-Jacques Favier, originally from Kness. Um They literally spent a week with us, uh, giving lectures, joining us at meals. Um, Soyeon uh, even sung to us one night uh, and gave us this kind of um, uncut, behind the scenes tale of her training um, as she was kind of you know, becoming a, an astronaut and going through Star City and stuff, which and it was so cool, just some tales that you'll kind of never see on the official public websites, that was fantastic. Uh, and they were totally awesome people, uh, it was an absolute pleasure to kind of spend time with them. So um, yeah, you definitely want to come along if you like that kind of experience. And of course there's a lot to learn. Um, you know, as, as Scott mentioned, the uh, the unofficial ISU motto is you can sleep on the plane, and they really aren't kidding. Uh, the classes are like six days a week uh, with some evening functions, and uh, I, yeah, I often found myself heading back from campus after midnight. But it's it's the intensity, it's the, the group, group collaboration and teamwork that kind of make the course what it is. Um, you're cramming around three months of study or so into about a three-week period, and then delivering a substantive white paper and presentation in two weeks. Yeah, it's it's a lot of work, but it's so much fun. Uh, you may be totally exhausted, but I can guarantee that if you asked anyone who did the course, they they'd say they loved the experience and they'd do it again. Um, right. Next. Um, so yeah, as uh, Scott briefly alluded to, um, uh, yeah. Uh, you get to meet, uh, you get to do some fascinating subjects and have a lot of fun along the way. Uh, it's a mix of um, hands-on lectures, uh, which kind of 
wake your mind up to how broad the space, space sector really is. And in this particular photo, I'm having fun practicing sutures on chicken legs as part of the space uh, medicine workshop. Because you know, when you're up in space, if, uh, you're the doctor if your crewmates get sick, you know, regardless of your background. So um, you, you, these types of things uh, you need to know to kind of be in the industry. It's, it's good, pretty cool. Uh, there was, of course, plenty of time for fun. Um, we hung out on the beaches, beaches most weekends, enjoyed the, uh, since the summer Australian sun, uh, and of course had plenty of uh, liquid refreshments at various functions and informal parties. Um, as I said, great bunch of people, um, work hard, play hard, um, <laughs> yeah, play creatively as it turns out, and this is a photo of the, uh, uh, just before one of the Space Masquerades party, which uh, uh, we all went to towards the end of the session. A uh, <laughs> bunch of fun. Um, uh, the, uh, this guy here is actually, um, well, where is he? Click. This guy here is um, uh, uh, actually one of the uh, there. This guy here is actually one of the other New Zealanders. Uh, uh, Ian. Uh, righty, moving on. Um, yeah. So, um, where did ISU take me? Um, I mean, some people kind of call the ISU the uh, the space mafia uh, because it's. Uh, kind of who you know uh, that kind of get you get you places um, and the contacts you make from the um, uh, the various functions um, uh, sorry the contacts that you make really kind of help you out through your career it's um, uh, it's uh, it, yeah there's definitely ways to look at that. If you want a career in space, uh, the connections you make will definitely help you along the way. Um, I personally wasn't looking for a traditional job in the space sector, so for me, ISU gave me the confidence to push ahead with my vision for New Zealand in space uh, to help me get you know, Kiwi space up and going and uh, really, uh, really kind of support and stuff to, for, for this course. Um, and, and the course itself gave me a lot of insight as to how the broader space sector work, uh, which, yeah, in retrospect, I was really quite naive to beforehand. Yeah, yeah. On the surface, you kind of think about rockets and satellites, and and, and that's about it. And yeah, everyone kind of wants to be an astronaut, but they don't kind of realise how broad space is, uh, and uh, some of the politics and uh, yeah, yeah, policy motivations and stuff behind everything. Um, yeah, ultimately, I love the course so much uh, that I volunteered to be on staff in January. Uh, so hopefully, I'll see many of you this summer. Um, I really cannot uh, encourage you enough to apply. The, uh, I really can't encourage you enough to apply for this course if you have any interest in space. Uh, you definitely, definitely won't regret it. Um, as uh, Scott said, you know, there are scholarships available. There's funding assistance and stuff. Apply. Work out the funding later. There are plenty of options here for you know, funding support and other bits and pieces. Uh, it's definitely apply and uh, give it a go. Um, so hopefully I've convinced you enough. Um, but if you do want to know more after this, there's also um, an Australasian alumni group on Facebook. Um, so feel free to ask there if you want another perspective. Um, if you um, yeah, wanna, there's people there from different backgrounds, so they'll be able to give you their perspective from um, you know what they came along and what it was like, etc. So thank you very much for that. Um, I will enable, see if I can make Scott turn his microphone on again now. Hopefully he can hear us. Scott, are you there? Yes, yes. Hello. Ah, fantastic. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, good, I can good. hear you fine. Uh, Cool. So we'll take, uh, so Scott and I will uh, both take questions. So, uh, Nancy thank just you, Mark. That was great. Well, thank you. Um, so Nancy asked, uh, what's my background? Um, I started a telco um, about uh, 15 years ago and basically worked as kind of a back-end software technician and uh, technical manager for, for many years. Um, and yeah, got the space bug and um, uh, yeah, found out about ISU by, by fluke. Um, and um, yeah, Took a punt, didn't quite know how I was going to get there at the, at the time, and um, absolutely uh, loved the course. So, uh, yeah. I've got a few more questions, I think, for Scott, which I can enable. Yeah, so what, uh, there's a question there from Scott. Uh, what, so I see. Uh, yeah, so let's see. Uh, Stardome asks uh, some of the engineering topics, and uh, we we focus largely on systems engineering. So the integration, uh, ISU is all about connecting the pieces. 
uh, both across disciplines and within disciplines. So uh, we, we offer uh, a very brief overview of uh, satellite buses, configuration, launchers, launch facilities, um, uh, the traditional pieces of GNC and power, uh, uh, payload, uh, but we, we approach it all from a systems engineering perspective of how do the pieces fit together. Uh, so in a, a very short uh, answer, that's really kind of how we how we look at it is less on, you know, we, we, we deal with orbital dynamics, we deal with payloads, with buses, with structures, with launchers, with launch sites, with uh, GNC telemetry, uh, but really our primary focus is how do these things fit together? How do they work together? How do you uh, make the trade-offs uh, uh, for specific kinds of payloads? So, Really, we kind of look at it from a systems engineering uh, perspective. Uh, so let's see, I hope that uh, answers your question. Um, cool. Okay, so let's see. Uh, any other questions or comments? Uh, we're very excited to uh, get New Zealand in the fold and uh, I look forward to, uh, please feel free to uh, contact me uh, really at any time uh, if you have further questions or comments or ideas. Let's see here from Harry, oh, great question. What about space education? Yes, absolutely. We have lectures on the history of space and we have uh, two <clears throat> Australian faculty who uh, both are uh, working in, <clears throat> excuse me, in space museums. So we have a, a dedicated lecture on space education, and then we have a dedicated three-hour workshop that everybody participates in on the whole issue of uh, space education, of public outreach, of uh, museums, of uh, the management and curation. And last year, as Mark uh, will remember, uh, we had a, uh, an event at the South African Museum, talked with their professionals in terms of how they, uh, how they do uh, museum management, how they present space to the public, uh, and uh, really get down in the, uh, the specifics of uh, how you actually do space education. Uh, and as I mentioned, several of our, uh, we do four evening events uh, which are open to the public, have lots of kids uh, coming and uh, it's uh, obviously a very important part of our program. Ah, so what opportunities are there to take it forward, Harry? Good question. Uh, and uh, really, I mean, the thing to do is uh, uh, it's uh, very exciting uh, to get in on the early stages of this new program. So uh, in a sense, we are very pleased with how the curriculum ran last year. We had made some uh, tweaks at the edges, and changing uh, things, looking at how we can do obviously a better job. And yes, of course, developing curricula in the schools, is a very important aspect and again our team project topic this year is what we're calling telereach which includes the whole domain of teleeducation uh, remote presence teleoperation and so uh, the how the developing world the space uh, fairy nations of the southern hemisphere can harness all of these uh, interlocking technologies to do a better job of developing curricula, providing space education, uh, fostering uh, science, technology, engineering, mathematics curricula. Uh, this is all part of what we're going to be uh, looking at uh, in our team project next time around. So uh, all really great topics.
Cool. Well, that's awesome, Scott. Um, have we got any more questions before we, uh, I think, probably draw this to a close? Or? Cool. Looks like no more questions. Alrighty. Well, thank you very much, Scott. Uh, we're definitely so grateful for you uh, taking time during your trip to uh, to make this session possible. Uh, and I'm sure everyone in there in attendance has enjoyed themselves and uh, learned a lot more. Um, and I hope, uh, yeah, hope, hopefully everyone can convey that in the chat window. Um, thank you so much. Um, and thank you, everyone, for attending today. Oop, there's Scott waving. <laughs> um, thank you very much, uh, everyone, for attending today. Uh, definitely hope you found it informative. And if you have any questions, uh, please feel free to contact me via the KiwiSpace website, uh, and I'll gladly find an answer out for you um, on any question, be that you know, uh, part of the course aspect, um, funding aspects, um, accommodation, things like that. Yeah, the uh, Australian Alumni Network and um, and obviously through Scott and other bits and pieces, I'm sure we'll be able to, to come back with any kind of answers to questions you guys have. And obviously, uh, oh, you guys need the link to register, don't you? <laughs> um, I think if you find the, uh, uh, it's already gone, damn, I've lost the history. Um, This link here should give you a lot more information about the actual program itself. Um, and I think there is an enrollment link available off there if you guys are wanting to apply. So um, if I refresh my memory, um, you apply. It, it, it's, uh, there's a number of kind of questions you have to go through. Um, you can come back and fill in parts of the application form later if you don't have all the answers right in front of you. So just go in there, get started, put register your interest, and that way at least I you know um, you're kind of interested in the process and um, they can get in touch with you if um, um, as they're starting to approach the, uh, the, the maximum number of numbers, etc. And um, uh, yeah, see if you're still keen, etc. <laughs> and as Scott uh, says, apply. <laughs> yeah, you definitely won't regret it. And I want to see everyone there. Enjoy.